little sore, a little banged up. Uh, we'll be off tomorrow. But all, all, together, all told, we've had three very productive days. Um, and so, uh, you know, we'll reconvene on Saturday. Um, Delon Wright's doing much better. He did some sprinting yesterday and did some more aggressive non-contact work today. So, um, depending on how things go tomorrow, uh, it's looking like the weekend might be possible for him to be back on the floor doing some live stuff. So that's that's good news. Um, other than that, you know, that's about it. Uh, just some aches and pains. So I, I, there's no injuries to report. Um, so. Jalen Brunson, had a really nice year for you last year. What sort of things are you hoping he improves on this season as a second year guy? Well, uh, he was, you know, last year he improved so much from the Vegas Summer League to, let's say, mid-season. You know, he just made massive adjustments in his game to what the NBA game is. And so, uh, it was one of our best defenders at the guard position. Um, he can play multiple positions. He's not hung up on where he plays. He's just a on the floor player, you know, um, but he can play point, he can play two. Uh, he went real small, he'd play three and he'd know, he'd know all the positions on the floor. He's one of those kind of guys. Was there anything though, any matchup that he got stuck in or he got caught up in that was hard for him size-wise or was he pretty good, considering he was a rookie, pretty good for what he did? He held his ground very well. Uh, you know, coming out in the draft, there were a lot of people that just, uh, so they just underestimated what his athleticism really was. Um, he's bigger, stronger, quicker, and faster than he appears. <clears throat> but he has a part of it is he just has a real great sense for the game. And the other part of it is he's more athletic than you think. And so, uh, you know, his shooting continues to get better. He's shooting the ball from, with with greater range and greater consistency, driving it better. Um, and so I see him as one of our core guys, you know, going forward for a long time. You have play from the start of the camp now to actually play an exhibition game. How do you gauge progress during a week like this? How, where is it? Well, it's a couple things. It's, you know, the level of um, enthusiasm and, you know, the level of force guys are playing with, the consistency with which they're competing. Um, with each other and pushing each other. Um, all those things have been extremely positive. So, you know, been a really good first three days. Um, you know, the off day tomorrow is just something that's necessary for recovery. And, um, but I'm pleased where we are, but we're by no means where we need to be. be very similar to other years. Um, you know, we're going to have about a 45 minute practice on the practice floor downstairs and we'll come up, um, introduce the guys and basically just get into the show. And so uh, there'll be two teams, I don't know what the teams will be, but uh, you know, they can expect to see the guys warm up, be introduced, and play. Um, but I don't know, I've seen some signs in Bill Warren's and it's an open practice. It's really more of a scrimmage than what, what they will do. Going off of Eddie's question too, now that you're a couple days into camp, getting to see Porzingis on the court, does that give you a better idea of what his availability looks like next week and you know what he might be able to do in the preseason? Who's that? Chris Epps. He's, he's doing great. He hasn't missed a rep of anything. So look, we, we go minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day. I mean, I'm not going to get into a prediction of the future for next week, but uh, I like where he is right now. And I, I, I don't, I don't see him playing back to backs. But we only have one back to back, so he'll play one of those first two games. Um, 
But we still got, you know, three more practices before we get on the plane and go to Tulsa or whatever it is. Rick, what have your what have your impressions been early on of Isaiah Roby? High energy, great kid, vastly improved since we drafted him. Uh, multiple position player. A really a prototypical big in today's game with the ability to shoot it, drive it, and make plays. His defense has improved. Um, and, you know, the first three days of training camp for any rookie um, is a lot going on. I mean, there's, there's their heads spin a little bit because things come fast and furious, and you got to get things in. So with a three-week training camp, you know, we're working on conditioning and defense, but we, you know, we're getting offensive things in and de detailed things in with timing and understanding and, and recall involved. So, uh, you know, he's he's absorbing all of it, doing doing well with it. Rick, what's the thing he's improved on most? Rick, you said like Jalen last year. You said from the summer league, you know, he really had to sort of transform his game. What 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 has Roby done in your eye to sort of begin that? He's gotten better at shooting the ball. Um, He's improved his range. Um, you know, his defense has gotten better guarding the ball, keeping guys in front. You know, he had some struggles in the summer league with that. Um, but he's a, an amazing kid, super upbeat, you know, guy that's going to be out here early and stay late all the time. And, uh, you know, just has that great team winner kind of vibe, you know, so. I, I think he's going to get uh, better and better and better, and, and he'll, have, he'll have some opportunities to play in the G League, too. Great, Derek, for you guys to be a good three-point shooting team, remember, what percentage do you want to get? 40% or 90%? I don't know what's a realistic good number for you to find it. As a team? Yeah. I'd love to be in the 40s. But I, you know, I don't get into throwing out the back of the loop because you know, it's, it's, it's such a process thing. Um, and you can have some games where you don't shoot it so good and they can throw your numbers off, but the important thing is to keep stepping into them aggressively and look at each shot as an opportunity. Just tally it up at the end. So you judge it on how you take it necessarily, whether or not against, if you took 43s and made 20, if you took them well and you're good shots, that's how you judge it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can look at shot attempts now. Shot value is a modern way of looking at it. That is, you know, what's the potential value of each shot based on where it's being shot from, how open it is, who's shooting it, you know, those kinds of things. That's, it's real technical, but you know what? We want good shots and we want to be aggressive stepping into them. Rick, Dirk, Dirk talked about how when he had developed that chemistry at Nash, it was a lot of the shooting competitions, the road dinners, things like that. When you look at, you know, what Luke and KP, uh, does all that kind of still factor in? Is, is all that still kind of valid in, in uh, developing that chemistry between a duo? Very much. Um, these guys do a lot of shooting before and after practice together. Um, once we get into the season, I know that all of our guys will be out um, together, you know, at dinners and things like that. And, and then the chemistry on the floor is big too. Uh, they have played together two of the three days. Uh, we're doing a lot of mixing of lineups to look at how different guys adapt to different teammates, et cetera, et cetera. And it's been it's been very interesting. Coach, you could you guys play uh, Detroit next week. Um, what are your thoughts about the, the potential combination between Derrick Rose and Blake Griffin this year? They're, good, they're both great players. I think they'll. I think they. I think they'll be good. Thanks, so. Yeah.